So, I'm joined by the wonderful Laura Muse, uh, who is a successful property investor and entrepreneur from Sheffield. Met Laura, what, about a year ago now? Exactly. Exactly a year ago, <laughs> um, And yeah, I kind of just want to get you on just to speak about kind of property, young people, entrepreneurship, social media, uh, and how, you know, someone that doesn't have any money does, but wants to get into property, you know, can do that. So just, just introduce yourself first, tell us a bit more about you. Your achievements, you know, really just blow your blow your <laughs> <laughs> um, So my name is Laura Muse, and uh, one half of I Square Property. I work with my husband James Muse in our business. We focus on buy to let, uh, new build developments, and commercial property within the Yorkshire region. Um, we work obviously on projects, but we also work with investors in a couple of ways. One to build them a property portfolio, lend them well, they lend money on a return, so obviously get them the money working better for them and we also offer an earn and learn opportunity for investors. Fantastic, fantastic. So my audience generally on Instagram is, is more full of young people so I really <laughs> want to have the focus on that uh, and I want, I want to you know in a sense talk about how someone that doesn't have experience, doesn't have connections yeah. can you know get their foot into property investing whether sourcing, trading, BRR, whatever. Yeah. So what, where, where would you start in terms of you know if, if someone is out there wants to get into property but doesn't know quite how or doesn't have the network let's say uh, so first of all i'd like to say that you know you do not need any expert experience in property my previous life has got nothing to do with property at all but the power is in our team so my team of people i.e my husband other people that we work with so if you've got a good um, team around you anybody can get into property um, definitely need to do a bit of education so i did a lot of reading back in the day I say back in the day, it's only three years ago. Um, <laughs> three years ago. <laughs> three years ago. Um, did a lot of reading, a lot of audio books. I went and paid for mentoring. Now, you don't have to do that. I would definitely do all the background work before you kind of put your hand in your pocket. There's so many free assets out there. You don't need to just delve straight in and start paying for loads of education. There's so much free content yeah, yeah, that you sure. can just, you know, fill your boots. Yeah. Um, in regards to money, um, not a lot of people get in property and have money. We were very fortunate that we did. But the most lucrative way to raise funds, raise your profile, find tenants, find landlords, find deals, is by leveraging social media 100%. It's something that has completely changed our business in a very short period of time. You know, I wouldn't be talking to you now, probably, if I hadn't have leveraged social media, because yeah. nobody would know who the bloody hell I am and what we've done. So. Um, social media really is the the key to a quick, successful brand building, Absolutely. portfolio building, and just really just connecting with a lot of people that you wouldn't normally touch base with. So that goes on to like personal brand, because I know a lot of people that struggle with you know putting documenting the journey, and that's very important. Yeah. A lot of people do struggle with that, thinking, oh, am I imposter? <laughs> you know, get that imposter syndrome. And I, I respect to a lot of people that say, I kind of want to position myself as that. But I want nothing to show for it. Yeah. So how would you say about getting across that mental block that people do face with, you know, I, I want to call myself property investor, <laughs> but I don't, I don't own a property. So. I mean, the thing <laughs> is, I think, I never started out thinking that people would know who I were. I, I literally just wanted to show people what we were doing. I didn't kind of start with the end in mind, like, yeah, sure. you know, when you do a logo, for me, it's, you know, you do start with the end in mind, whereas, the social media journey really wasn't that way for me at all. Um, I started doing bits about, you know, showing people me going into an estate agent, me telling an estate agent saying, you know, get out, like, you know, we, we've got so many investors, we're not that bothered. And it was just a real down to earth document of me out there, boots on the ground, highs, lows, everything in between. And, you know, don't get too hung up on being this face of property or because the next guru <laughs> yeah like you know people buy from people they know like yeah, and trust 100%. and that's one thing you know if you're being consistent you're being authentic and you know you're out there doing real stuff um investors deals tenants whatever you need it's all at your fingertips utilizing social media so you need to get out of your own way there's only one way to get to do it, it is get out of your you, own and way. you said that to me and <laughs> I, I, to you, I said look 
you know, I want to get funding for my next deals. <laughs> and, and, you know, the guy that works in social media, sometimes, it's, again, it's that kind of block where you yeah. think, you know, do I kind of call myself a property investor or am I just a marketer? So sometimes no. I, I know you say you can raise the finance easy, but I guess it's that kind of minute of what that even yeah, when I first started, Joe, I never thought somebody would even lend me a pound, <laughs> mind millions of pounds. It's which, just which insane. Which is what you've done, which is unbelievable. Um, you know, when my mentor at the time said, come on, like, the next 30 days, I want to post on social media, my first thought were, oh my God, what the hell am I going to post? <laughs> like, who's going to want to listen to me was my first thing, which yeah. a lot of people have that mindset. But just remember, you know, I might have been six months into my journey, but there was somebody who were hours into their journey. Yeah. So you're always going to inspire somebody. Yeah, you don't have to be, you know, 10, 15, 20 years plus in property before you start posting about yeah. it. You know, because there's always somebody who is just starting. And you're an expert in someone else's eyes, are you? I suppose so. But I think I think it's more that you, you're you not that far ahead, so it's tangible for them. Yeah. So it's like, you know, your big property like Simon Zucci or your Rob Moore, and they've got a huge property portfolio. Like, you know, somebody just starting out, that's a little bit like, oh shit, like, that's a bit much. Yeah. But for somebody who's got three or four buy to let, and you're like, actually, I could get to three or four buy to let. It makes it more achievable. Yeah. Um, and I think that's where you gain your following from originally, is for people who are just starting out and think, do you know what? I can do that as well. Yeah. And that's kind of what we did. So you would say, build a personal brand, get educated, document the journey, be real. And then the deals and investments and people will start kind of obviously not flocky yeah, feet, yeah. but you'll start to build up some sort of you know following. reputation, following brand or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, I mean the, the the personal brand thing I think might come a bit later once you decide once you. what your niche is, like we specialise in buy to let's me personally, husband does developments, that's kind of his micro niche within yeah. the niche, if that makes yeah. sense. And I think that comes with time. So don't get bogged down with thinking, oh, I want to build this big personal brand. If you're that way inclined, brilliant. Like, you've got absolutely no excuse, Joe. I don't know why. <laughs> um, but for somebody who's just starting out, just tell people what you're doing, where you invest, why you invest there, what's the opportunity for investors, and share that with everyone on Facebook. You know, utilise property groups. Yeah. Quickest way to grow a following is by posting regularly um, authentic content into a property group. Yeah. They will then start following you on your social, like your personal profiles. Yeah. And that's how you build up a following. And then, you know, you grow, they grow, and it's... Like, I was just thinking about, like, a year ago, literally, just before <laughs> I met you guys, I, you know, profit was a big dream for me. Like, I just never had the network, and now I've met absolutely, like, unbelievable people. And that's just the through the power of, of social media yeah. uh, and niching down, actually doing marketing for property yeah. investors. You know, it, it's paid itself in... Dividends. <laughs> yeah, no, honestly, as well. Um, that's very interesting. So the most lucrative ski trip ever, Joe. I know. Honestly, honestly like, the, the connections I made is just unbelievable. Like it was def definitely worth coming. I, I thought I'd make some good connections. I'm quite like an open person. I like to build that relationship yeah, with people, did. Um, which was good. So talk to me. So what advice would you give to someone that well, I'm saying my position? So I've got a bit of a and I've got a bit of a foot in, let's say, but I'm still kind of still feel like kind of block. New. Yeah, I still feel like a new. So posting in Facebook groups and stuff like that, I'm still kind of on the fence about that. <laughs> I don't mind posting to my own content, to my own kind of yeah, followers, yeah. but it's it's when you're in, you know you're in the field of you know people like Rob Moore, people like you know all the all the progressive speakers or whatever. But they encourage you to do that. I know they encourage you to do that. Um, so a hundred percent, go into a group. Just go into a group. I just picked one. It was progressive property. Yeah. It's got over thirty five thousand followers, which is insane. Yeah. A lot of investors in there that will never comment or like anything you're doing. Introduce yourself, say what you do, where, which area you're in, what's the opportunity for them in that area, and you know, document when you're going to the estate agents, when you've done viewings, if you've got a, a deal accepted. Please don't be one of these people that gets the keys and just goes, Oh, I've got the new keys today. How did you get them keys? Like, you've got to give some value some to what you're doing, context. some com you know, there needs to be some, I call it gubbins to your post, so you know, don't just. If it's just an empty post, it's not really going to resonate with an investor. But if you go, just got the keys, bloody hell, that were a nightmare. Yeah. Or they were in the most amazing buying experience. I've got a great solicitor. As long as you're telling people this, it's building up that no like and trust. Um, so just do it. Yeah. So I was going to do a post, and it's interesting you said that. My, my post that, that I had in my mind was, like I said, standing at the front of the property. This is what we've done. But I've kind of been posting a little bit recently because we're having, at the moment we're having trouble with you know financing the property. Yeah. 
Um, so we got an offer, and then they said that because there's a lot of housing associations on that road, that they pulled they pulled away, which was obviously annoying. So at the moment we're trying to find funding, but it's proven difficult. Yeah. So I'm thinking if you know, one, hopefully, you know, touch wood, we'll get the property and then give some context behind you know the struggle yeah. that we've had to get here, as opposed to just yeah, look at me kind of thing. <laughs> No, that's I mean, perfect. We, yeah, so, yeah. And as long as you're being uh, transparent with people, we'll so that. the good and the bad the side of property. Bad. I'm not saying it's a bad side, but you know, property investment is a simple thing to do. But the journey to get there from thinking about it to getting to where you want to be, or even, you know, you've got a deal accepted, well, getting that deal accepted to getting the keys, there's a whole story there. And it's just about sharing that with people. Yeah, massively. Massively. <laughs> um, Education, school system, property investing, you know, this is this is a big one. So, and it kind of made clear to me, obviously, buying this process, you know, going through the process of buying this property, how how much of a valuable skill it would, would have been to get taught at school. Um, and the fact that, you know, right. <laughs> and, and just the fact that, you know, go, going through that process and, you know, you know, not knowing, like, you know, the, yeah. the solicitors and the mortgage brokers, like, you never get taught this stuff. Yeah. And I just think if I'd have known that before, you know, fully sped up this process so I don't know what your thoughts would be in terms of should we teach entrepreneurship property investing passive income or what, what, what would your thoughts be in terms of the education system oh god 100 percent. I mean I wish when I left school I would even say it's only probably been these last seven years I have turned on my money switch if I'm going to be completely honest with you. I had no respect for money, I didn't know what it could do or not do for me. I got myself into a bit of debt and um, didn't realise the implications of the debt, which a lot of people do when they leave school and especially university. You know, they, they get these student loans but then they get credit cards and they can't pay them back. Then you get a red mark against your name and you know, that really affects you, your life basically. Yeah. But if I'd have been educated, you know, around my finances, around how I can, you know, be an entrepreneur, be self-sufficient, set up my own business, property investment, other invest, other investing strategies. My life would have been completely different from a young, from an early age. But instead, I went through the traditional. The traditional. You go to school. You go to uni. You come away. You get the dream job, which you work in 60, 70 hour uh, weeks. You get the house, you've got this massive mortgage around your neck, then you don't take a day off work because then you can't pay your bloody mortgage and then you die. So, retire at yeah, what? so, oh. and then you retire at 100 probably. <laughs> so, yeah, 100%, I think it's, it's got to change. It's got to change. And I think now people are a lot more aware of it and a lot more vocal, utilising social media. Um, I, I think it, it's got to, something's got to change. Yeah, definitely. I think like, you know, we say about generation rent, you know, they're the calling my generation that, you know, we'll never go out on a house because the wages and the disparity. But well, they have them tools, they don't have to be generation rent. Exactly, and that's what my thought is to have enough profit is to pay for my rent, but if, if we've been taught this in school, like, this is just what I've learned from, you know, being surrounded by kind of entrepreneurs and business people, but yeah. people that don't have that network think, right, I'm going to have to, you know, save for a deposit, you know, a couple of years, yeah. um, hopefully buy my dream home, uh, and then that's that, and then you're stuck in that. Not building assets which pay for your liabilities, which is obviously Plenty what you get taught. And it's, it's that actually, choice. It's that choice of the freedom. You're never it? taught that there's a choice. You're taught there's a certain way of life, and you either fall in or you fall out. Yeah. Um, and I don't agree with that. And, and this is another thing um, entrepreneurship, like leaving your old circle, I've certainly. Oof. Oh, this is a big one for me, <laughs> big, big one for me anyway. I used to have like, quite, quite a close group of friends at school, and then. Kind of just drifted apart, and I've met, but I met incredible entrepreneurs, and now like friends that are going to be like on the same journey. Um, but I think if you don't have that network, and you're maybe surrounded by a family that, you know, think you're crazy for wanting to start your own business, or friends that are just doing drugs or getting pissed every weekend, it's hard. You, you become a product of the five people you surround yourself with. You know, that, there's no doubt about that. But people that are not lucky enough to have that kind of surrounding with them, it, you know, it'd be hard for them to break from that mold. So, what advice would you give to someone that is like? you know, stuck, that, that really wants to get out, but, you know, doesn't have the connection, doesn't have the confidence, doesn't have the personal brand yet, no money, nothing, but... I think the thing is being self-aware, and until you do start on a mindset journey, you're never going to realise who you're surrounded with and how they're holding you back. Um, a couple of, well, a 
couple of years ago I lost my mum, my nan and my auntie literally oh, within wow. months of each other and prior to that point I'd always been surrounded with the same people, people I went to university with, you know, left uni with an equestrian degree, equine nutrition degree but then was stuck in, you know, a nine to five job. That was the norm. I was, I, for some reason I'd fallen a bit lucky, my mum pushed me to go get that job that I went to university to get and I was fortunate that, that I got that job at the company I wanted. But when I lost my mum especially, I moved from Leeds to Sheffield, I moved in with my husband, obviously James, James yeah. and it was a different way of life. His family are all entrepreneurs, I'm going to sneeze, um, <laughs> all entrepreneurs, <laughs> <laughs> um, they've got their own businesses, you know, his family in Spain, they've all got their own businesses and it was a different mindset of people. Um, even if my mum would have been alive now, and I hate to say this, but I do think my life would be different because mm -hmm. she has been brought up in that era of you go to school, you go to uni, like she pushed me to go to uni, you get the dream job and you stick at that job for the rest of your life until you retire and then, and then you, you, yeah, you, you, so um, obviously when I lost my family, I had a, a massive breakdown in my life, you know, and I really, I couldn't see a way out and luckily for me, James had met a lady travelling who was all about mindset and yeah, not ashamed to say it, a bit of counselling and I 100% yeah, yeah. had that, but I didn't want to go down this route of, you know, antidepressants, etc, etc. So I started on this mindset journey in September 2015 and it's completely changed my life. It opened my mind to so many new things. Um, I've drawn so many new people into my life, but importantly, the people who weren't serving me and were dragging me down the whole crabbing bucket, yeah. um, we've all heard that before, I cut them loose out of my life because they weren't serving me and I felt... Have you cut them completely off yeah. or, yeah, just, yeah. just, just don't? It was, a, it, was a, it was a process. Yeah. Not going to say that we decided one day, right, you don't ever speak to me. <laughs> um, but it was just, as you develop and evolve yeah. into that next stage of your life, People try and hold you back and it's only once you're self-aware that you realise that's happening. I think a lot of people go through life not not awake yeah. um, and it's only when things trigger certain people will wake up in their lives, whereas I did after that massive loss. For others it's different, yeah, sure. that was mine. Um, but unless you're self-aware, I don't think people would ever cut that circle loose yeah but i think it's a good thing that so many people talk about mental health mindset all this personal development and um, i think that is going to change a lot of people yeah and loneliness in entrepreneurship i mean <laughs> i certainly find that i'm mean, luckily working with annie now but before you know it used to be i used to just be in my bedroom just you know just working by myself and sometimes i miss having that camaraderie of people yeah. sometimes you get you know in a job you, you feel part of something but i guess with, with obviously in the property especially digital marketing because it's pretty much an online business yeah, yeah. you know you are it is pretty much just me and my laptop or it's you and your houses but you know sometimes yeah, entrepreneurship and, and loneliness in entrepreneurship you know it's pretty common in, in people yeah. isn't it it is and one good thing about property is i mean i've come from a equestrian background and for anyone's listening who's ever had a horse it is the bitchiest lifestyle you could is ever it? have <laughs> it is definitely dog eat dog and when i went into property i found it weird that everyone was being so nice mm. i thought what do they want they is must there an want, agenda yeah they yeah. must want something but actually i would say 95 percent of the people i've met are really genuinely nice and they genuinely want to help yeah. and see you get on in your life yeah and um, so i do think the property space isn't as backstabbing and bitchy and why would you say that why, why, why do you think that is um, just so many people I don't really know have offered to help me, um, I, I lend money or help me if I've got a, a gap in knowledge yeah. for no financial gain and yeah. I think that's one of the key things. Yes, there's a lot of people out there that sell the courses and of course they do, that's mainly their business but there's a lot of friends, the ski trip, a lot of lifelong friends on there that's and realistically it. I've seen them twice a year. Yeah. I've seen them twice, like for a week. Yeah. But you make them connections with people. Oh, and massively. They, you know, we, we caught, we, you know, we speak to each other, but I've technically only probably seen them a couple of times in my life. Yeah, yeah. But I've got a better bond with these people, and they help me, and I help them. Yeah. And it's a win-win for both. Massively. Um, and for feel shit, I can ring them because 
they know how it feels because they're going through it too. Yeah, yeah. Or if they haven't, they've been through it, or they'll ring me and go, oh, Laura, this has just happened. I'm like, oh, shit, that happened to me six months ago. Um, and then you can talk about the problem. And yeah, 100%. Sort of and I, 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 the property world, I feel like a little family. Yeah. And if you get, you know, I feel like we, me and James have been very fortunate to fall into that right family from the beginning. Yeah. And uh, oh, I was going to say, property sharks, a lot of pro- property <laughs> firms. What are your thoughts on them? Um, do we do due diligence before you decide to work with anybody? Um, we have been subject to it, thinking people are X, Y, and Z. And the They own sod all, basically. So uh, check them out in company's house. Yeah. Our accountant is um, like Inspector Clouseau. <laughs> so he'll, he'll do that. Yeah, so, yeah. No, we've started, you know, have these people actually got as many properties as they say? Have they been in property as long as they've said? Because a lot of it is smoke and mirrors. With do you think that? I do, yeah, I do. Um, do you know that's in the general population? I think it's or been think it's... magnified a lot more in the last 12 months since a lot more of us have been at home. A lot more people have social been active media, on yeah. social media. I think a lot of people's masks have definitely slipped yeah. and they've been called out for it. But yeah. if you are giving social proof of what you're doing, you're never yeah. going to have an issue. And that's why me and my husband are so big on social proof of our projects that we've done. Clear, transparent, yeah. you know, open, openness with It goes people. well, it goes well, it goes wrong, it goes wrong. How do you get from A to B? Sharing that with people and the different variety. You know, whenever we've got a project, we've always done a week on week. This is what we've done this week. Would you plumbers let us down? Yeah. And... Just be open and. I think that's why people really uh, what's it, attract to you because you, you're op- open, real, and honest. Because sometimes you can see this glossy, you know, people got a glossy image on that everything's going well all the time, <laughs> killing it, you know, the, the making, you know, whatever. But seeing the real and raw side of it yeah. makes people think actually, you know, it's not just me going through the problems. Uh, I think that's what, that's what you offer. That's, that's why what a lot you do. Of our investors invest with us because we've shown them everything, the not just just not the the flowery side. It's, yeah. you know, the real and raw side, you're on the ground. Shit side as well. The shit side, yeah, <laughs> simple as that. So yeah. And that's such an important thing. Um, so, yeah, back onto the term of young people. Um, as I said, this is the main of what we're focusing on. Sorry, I'm yeah. <laughs> 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 sorry, it was tangent. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, I mean, I'm just trying to think what, what value could they add to us. I'm just trying to think of a good question now. Let me think. If there's anyone in there watching any questions, let us know. Um, Young people, young people. I think there's a big disparity in. I say, get a lot of messages from people. What about young people's credibility? Credibility, yeah. You know, because someone that maybe has had a corporate career, or worked in more, you know, that's had life experience, maybe, maybe would find it easier than someone that's coming out of uni yeah. or coming out of college. I know there's a lot of people now. wanting, I see so many seventeen-year-olds like f- watching the Samuel Leeds and you know videos like I'm thinking, you know, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Pro- thinking property investing is, you know, it's as easy as it says. You know, you can yeah. get five grand a month from you know deal sourcing, deal packaging. Rent to rent, you know that kind of yeah. thing. And it's portrayed as this kind be of be a millionaire in a month. Be a millionaire in a month, yeah. You know, financially free, <laughs> passive income, you know, all, all the same kind of words. But I think that kind of disillusions people and think, yeah. right, you know what, I want to get into property. And, you know, property, you know, obviously served for you and served for a lot of people. It can be a good vehicle for wealth and to live life on your terms. But there's a struggle that you've got to get through to get to that point, which yeah. I think like a lot of, especially YouTube and you know all this content that we consume on a day is like. It gives you that, you can disillusion you. I don't know what, what your thoughts with that would be, just um, get real. Me, <laughs> yeah, I think me and James fell into that trap of a mean brute. Oh, really? Just, yeah, so I don't think it's really age specific. I think it's just marketing. Marketing's really good. Yeah. And, you know, when we first started, we were like, right, yeah, a year, we're going to absolutely smash this, we're going to get to us five grand a year. Well, we didn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it took us about 18 months. Um, but property is not a quick solution. It is not a sprint. It is a hundred percent a marathon, and you're gonna hit so many speed bumps on the way. It's how you overcome them. Yeah. So and you know it's really important of who you've got around you because you know for example if your partner's not on board with what you're doing or your family is not on board or your friends and you've not made that mindset shift to 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 surround yourself with others, yeah, you are gonna give up pretty quickly because if you're not getting anywhere and somebody's constantly saying to you. It's not going to work. This is not going to work. Oh, it's Chipping taking too really long. Yeah. Like, you are going to give up if you decide what course of action you are taking. Stick to it. Be laser focused and start surrounding yourself with people who are doing it yeah. because it is achievable. You just got to have the grit. And you know, I want to say property is easy. It, it's not. The process is, 
the journey certainly isn't as high as lows and there's everything in between yeah. um so your support network to get from a to b i think is very important if you're a solopreneur yeah so anyone that's let's say not mortgageable how can they get into property that listen they've got they've got basic income would you say join talk about joint venture partnerships jv with someone else or get how would you advise them because there might be people that w- want to get into it but just won't be able to get more themselves so would you say go out and network meet someone you trust and like leverage them um, what, what would you say? i'm certainly not a financial expert <laughs> I'm just gonna that. Um, there's a couple of different ways but it really depends on what your end goal is is it that you want to share property with somebody else because Sharing property, especially in a buy to let situation, can be quite difficult. Yeah. You know. Well, that's what I'm doing. Yeah. So which... it can be quite difficult. You know, it's you know, if you're splitting three hundred quid a month, that's hundred and fifty which yeah. initially to get going is great, but yeah. you know, how's that gonna pan out a couple of years down the line? Yeah. If you are that person where, you know, you want to work with other people on a joint venture basis, just remember it's a relationship. A marriage. It is a hundred percent like a marriage, <laughs> and if you're in bed with somebody like that, and you've not checked them out right, you've not met up with them, you've yeah. not got a grasp on the personality, and you've not got a legal agreement, which is what I would a hundred percent advise, yeah. a proper one, not some one that you've downloaded on the internet. <laughs> um, you know, it is a marriage, so be very careful of who you get into bed with. But it's not to say that it don't work. There's lots of my friends that have built portfolios on joint ventures, but it really is. The end goal. I don't want to share. I don't want to share. I share with my husband, but I yeah. don't want to joint venture with anyone else. Yeah. The only way we joint venture. Would you loan money to someone else? Yeah. So we loan we loan money to people who we're on a ski trip with. Oh right. Um, yeah. So you do loan money. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So we do that because we built up no like and trust. Yeah. Yeah. Because we know that person can start and finish a project because we've seen it. Yeah. Social proof. Social proof. You don't um, just give money to. Absolutely not. No. No. Um, so if we built a relationship with somebody, we would lend money. We've built a relationship like the houses we're sat in now, their new builds. It's somebody who, what if we, well, James has been friends with our JV for many years. Yeah. He put 50% into the land, you know, we've built it, we've got investor finance, the fund, the residual. Yeah. And then, you know, we split the profit 50 50 because we're selling. If we were retaining, it would be a different conversation because yeah. how, how is that going to really work if they decide to sell in 10 years? Because our plan is to never sell. You buy to hold? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that makes um, sense. Yeah. I don't know if that's answered your question. No, that's a good answer. So just final piece of advice really before we wrap it up. Yeah. What what would you say is the most important thing for someone that's, like I said, just wants to get into property? Um, and would you also say it's probably the best way of, you know, building long term wealth? You know, obviously there's stocks, there's bonds, there's crypto, you know, there's other investment methods, but you know, the term safe as hard, would you say that's um, so we don't just do property. So my husband invests in crypto. He does. Not my forte in life. Yeah. Not interested. Yeah. Um, Shout out to Elliot Rain if you're watching. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know enough about that to advise anybody. Yeah. Um, all I know is about property. But one thing I would say is it's about spreading your risk. Yes. So maybe not have all your eggs in one basket, i.e. maybe, you know, the last 12 months have shown us, especially in our portfolio, you know, we've got buy to lets, we've got HMO, we've got commercial property, because we're spreading our risk across the property types and also the tenant types. So whatever you choose to do, whether it's property or crypto or whatever, I think spreading your risk obviously creates a lot more financial security yeah. and wealth. But safe, safest houses is definitely uh, what we love. So. Yeah. Well, Laura, thanks very much for joining <laughs> me. I, I really enjoyed that. And I hope people have kind of got value from that. And um, no, thanks for asking. Yeah, me. no, thanks for coming on. Cool. Cheers. <laughs>